A couple, Jake and Darby, have been engaged for 10 years, but their engagement feels like a distant memory amidst the hectic journey of their daily grind. Their families, however, refuse to let the milestone slip by unnoticed. On the night of their engagement anniversary, a special event unfolds as their family arranges a surprise dinner at the very restaurant where Jake popped the question a decade ago. The couple is bewildered and caught off guard when the anniversary is announced, but they play along, masking their surprise with smiles. After the dinner, they walk home and reflect on the journey of the past 10 years, reminiscing on the obstacles that postpone their trip down the aisle. The weight of responsibilities and aspirations has overshadowed the significance of their engagement, leaving them pondering on how long they've been engaged and the twists and turns life has thrown their way. As they approach their house, Jake reveals he has some work to do at the shop and might end up sleeping there if he doesn't finish on time. Darby tries to protest, but Jake reveals he doesn't want to interrupt her filming her cooking class in the morning, and she finally agrees. They bid each other goodnight and Jake leaves for the shop. The next morning, Darby heads to school and sets up a fake kitchen backdrop in a classroom for her cooking lesson. Just as she's about to finish, her friend Carla bursts in, interrupting the video. Darby stops the recording and reveals she might stop making videos, because many people are not watching them. Just then, she gets a mean comment from someone saying her kitchen isn't real, which discourages her the most. She complains to Carla about making video lessons for two years with no success, but Carla encourages her not to give up, as things will get better soon. After school, Darby relates what happened to Jake. He cheers her up by saying he was one of the 30 people who watched her video. Soon after, Jake's friend comes over, so Darby leaves them to chat. They plan to watch a game together, but Jake forgets about it. He grumbles about not having many customers at his shop, and his friend suggests Wednesday meetings as a solution, as Jake's dad hosts meetings on Wednesdays to address issues in the town. Meanwhile, Darby stays inside, working on her schoolwork. The day after, Darby heads to her parents' place to see her grandma. She meets her dad cooking and says hello to him before she heads out to chat with her grandma. There, she shares her dream of opening a restaurant in New York, but it feels like a distant dream. Her grandma cheers her on, saying it might be more within reach than she believes. Meanwhile, over at Jake's ski shop, his mom pays a visit, explaining that his dad sent her to remind everyone about the town meeting coming up on Wednesday morning. Curious, Jake asks what the meeting's about. His mom shares that it's about getting more tourists to visit during the fall and getting ready for the ski season. She adds that everyone's worried, because business has been slow for everyone. Jake starts to worry that his dad is taking on too much by himself. He asks if there's anything he can do to help, but his mom suggests he should just attend the meeting with Darby. Jake promises he'll be there. As his mom gets ready to leave, she checks in on him, saying she noticed he and Darby seemed a bit down the night before. Jake opens up, admitting they realize they've been engaged for 10 whole years, which hit them pretty hard. His mom reminds him of all the challenges he's faced in the past decade, including a serious ankle injury that dashed his Olympic dreams, and comforts him before leaving. In the evening, Darby comes back from her parents' house and settles in the comfort of her living room, flipping through a magazine. Jake's arrival breaks the silence, and she eagerly shares the highlights of her visit to her parents' home. A weighty silence hangs between them, prompting a conversation long overdue. With a heavy heart, Darby voices her doubts about their relationship, feeling it's lost its spark. Jake, too, admits to having similar feelings, lamenting about the fading magic of their love. Their moment leads them down memory lane, tracing the path of the past 10 years. They realize they've spent a decade taking care of others' needs, neglecting their own desires in the process. Emotions well up as they talk about their unfulfilled dreams. In the midst of their difficult situation, they silently contemplate the unthinkable without uttering the words aloud, parting ways. Jake expresses his fear of holding Darby back from her aspirations of a new city life, while he reveals he'll make some decisions of his own based on how the ski season will turn out. With a heavy heart, Darby is nervous about breaking the news to their families. Seeking guidance from Jake, she poses the question of their next steps. In response, Jake offers a temporary solution, suggesting he'll spend the night at his shop until he figures things out, while they'll break the news to their families over breakfast the following day. They embrace each other lovingly. The next day, they leave to meet Jake's parents, prompted by his mother's phone call hinting at an important discussion. Arriving at the house, they are taken aback by the presence of media personnel swarming around with cameras. Inside awaits an unexpected spectacle. A chorus of voices erupts. Confusion clouds their faces until Jake's parents approach, revealing they are about to go on national television. Darby hastily tries to adjust her appearance, but Jake's mother reassures her that she looks gorgeous. Suddenly, a woman named Sarah shows up and introduces herself as the producer of Hey Good Day. Before they know it, they're taken away to be on the show. The sudden attention puzzles Darby, and she tries to find out what's going on, only to be informed they are about to go on camera with New York in a few seconds. Soon, the show begins and they find themselves thrust into the limelight, the hosts unraveling their story and the essence of the show before an audience of thousands. They are speechless as they try to process what is happening. Everything is happening so fast, and they can't wrap their minds around it. 
During a brief break, Darby seizes the opportunity to slip away, contemplating escape through a nearby window. Jake, sensing her distress, abandons his seat to follow her, but Sarah signals one of the crew members to follow him. He manages to get into the room Darby went into earlier. Alone in the room, they discuss their next move. Darby proposes revealing their breakup to their family once they leave the room, but Jake doesn't want to shatter their family's image on air. Instead he suggests a different plan, which is, deliberately losing the game show and informing everyone about their separation afterwards. Darby finds it funny at first, but she notices Jake's seriousness. Jake gives his reason for such a suggestion as a chance for them to have some fun, revitalize their businesses, and uplift their town. With newfound resolve, they emerge from the room, ready to play their parts in the show's unfolding drama. After the day's show, they gather at Jake's parents' living room, watching the highlight of the show. They watch as the hosts of the show reveal the location for the upcoming competition as Chicago. A surge of excitement spreads through the room as they learn they will be competing against three other couples in the city. After the show ends, Darby suggests calling it a night. But Jake's mother, fueled by anticipation for the competition ahead, urged them to retire early in readiness for the competition prep, beginning the next day with her friend Peggy. Despite Jake's concerns about his responsibilities at the shop, his father assures him that arrangements have been made for its smooth operation in his absence. Reluctantly Jake agrees, recognizing how unavoidable their participation in the competition is. Following their late-night discussion, they set off for Peggy's house, the center of their competition preparations. Arriving at her house, they find Peggy engrossed in a workout. She offers refreshments, only for Jake to spit it out in disgust at the taste. Soon, they dive into the show's strategy discussions. Suddenly, Darby fakes a phone call, and with a well-executed pretense, she announces an urgent departure, leaving Jake stunned. As he moves to follow, Darby halts him, insisting he remains with the women. Jake realizes Darby's mischief as she makes her exit. Later in the day, Jake returns home to find Darby leisurely enjoying a snack. He acknowledges her cunning move and praises her with a smirk before heading out with his skis in hand. To Darby's surprise, Jake's mother and Peggy make an unexpected entrance, revealing Jake's scheme to catch up on all she missed during the prep. Caught off guard, Darby attempts to make excuses, but the determined women aren't taking chances. With no choice but to comply, Darby finds herself once again at the mercy of their plans. The next day, being the day they are to embark on their journey to Chicago for the competition, Darby is jolted awake by a resounding knock at her door. It is the Hey Good Day crew, ready to capture a glimpse of their home life. She places a swift call to Jake, who spent the night at the shop. He rushes to the house, welcoming the crew inside. Sarah, the producer, explains their mission to capture candid shots of their daily lives before they set off for Chicago. With their home duly immortalized on camera, they set out for the bustling city, greeted warmly by the crew upon arrival. As the show commences, each of the four couples take the stage to introduce themselves. From heartwarming stories of heroic rescues to snippets of personal history, the couples share their stories with the eager audience. However, the fourth couple, hailing from Chicago, exude an air of confidence, elated by the belief in their hometown advantage. During a short break, tensions grow as Marcy and Larry, the confident locals, make pointed jabs at Jake and Darby, triggering Darby's abrupt departure from the table in frustration. Jake, attempting to soothe her, reassures her that it was just mind games. Yet Darby remains unconvinced. Their moment of discord is interrupted by Sarah, revealing the imminent return of the show. They follow her lead. Soon, the much-awaited show commences. Jake finds himself in the spotlight, recounting the harrowing tale of his ankle injury, a day etched in his memory as the darkest of times despite years of relentless hustle. He speaks of Darby's unwavering support throughout his ordeal, and Darby in turn affirms her readiness to stand by him without hesitation, highlighting Jake's consistent support for her family. After the brief talk, they plunge into the first challenge, the egg dash. Molly, the spirited host, lays down the rules, igniting a flurry of action as the couples dive headfirst into the task at hand. In a triumphant display of skill and teamwork, Darby and Jake emerge victorious. Marcy gives them envious glances, which are unnoticed by the jubilant pair. The next challenge puts their knowledge of each other to the test, with 15 probing questions designed to reveal the depth of their connection. Once again, Darby and Jake emerge triumphant. Fortunately, none of the couples face elimination on the inaugural day. Instead, they are treated to a special reward, a night out to savor Chicago's deep dish pizza. As the day's events drew to an end, the couples retire to their respective quarters. Entering their room, Darby and Jake find themselves engulfed in laughter, reminiscing about the day's events and showering each other with compliments for their efforts. Jake, uplifted by the excitement of the competition, proposes they continue their journey, unwilling to let go of the joy they are experiencing. Darby readily agrees. As Darby settles in for a quick rest, her phone rings, heralding a call from Carla bearing good news, a massive increase in her social media following. Grinning from ear to ear, Darby can't contain her excitement at the newfound recognition. Later, all the couples reconvene for another challenge, with the stakes higher than ever. The show officials announce that one couple will bid farewell by the end of the game, ramping up the tension in the room. 
The challenge, dubbed Life Balance, tasks the couples with maintaining balance on a narrow beam while navigating obstacles hurled their way. As Darby and Jake brave the beam, their rivals unleash a barrage of distractions, aiming to knock them off course. Despite the pressure, they persevere, emerging victorious once more. However, Marcy's displeasure at their success is unhidden, casting a shadow over their triumph. At the end of the game, one of the couples is eliminated. In a cruel twist of fate, just as Jake leaps from the beam, his old ankle injury flares up, causing him great pain. Darby notices this, but Jake says he's fine. Darby ignores him and alerts Molly, pretending to fear disqualification. Fortunately, their status as fan favorites ultimately spares them, granting them a chance to compete the next day. Returning to their room, tensions increase between Jake and Darby, with Jake unleashing his frustration at Darby's lack of trust and his assurance that his ankle is fine. However, Darby counters, pointing out the unmistakable swelling in his ankle. Their argument is abruptly interrupted by a call from Jake's friend, bearing unexpected news of an increase in customers at the shop and a demand for ski lessons. Despite not having a ski school, Jake's friend proposes the idea, sparking a ray of possibility. Meanwhile, Darby receives a thrilling message from a renowned chef, expressing interest in meeting her in New York after the show. Their excitement bubbles over, prompting Jake to suggest a celebration away from the prying eyes of the crew. They sneak out of the building unnoticed, embarking on an adventure through the city streets on bicycles, all the while discussing their aspirations beyond the competition. Their outing climaxes in a cozy dinner, where Darby surprises Jake with his long-desired pie, setting the table for a lighthearted meal filled with laughter and heartfelt conversation. In a moment of reconciliation, Jake extends a heartfelt apology for his earlier outburst, sealing their decision to remain in the competition, and perhaps even lend a helping hand to a fellow couple to win, other than Marcy and Larry. Another day of competition arrives, the remaining three couples gathering for a playful challenge dubbed the Frosting Fight. Darby and Jack once again emerge victorious, earning a handsome reward of $10,000. With tensions high, they find themselves facing off against Marcy and Larry in the final showdown. In a heartwarming twist, the hosts announce that both couples' families have been invited to join them before the approaching finals, adding a layer of warmth and support to the competition. After the excitement of the game, Jake and Darby retreat to share a meal with their parents. Amidst congratulations from Jake's father, Darby expresses contentment with whatever the future holds. Yet, Jake's father shows unwavering confidence in their inevitable victory, with Jake's mom citing past statistics favoring Southern couples. However, his optimism is met with confusion by Darby and Jake, as they learn that the ultimate winner will be determined by a viewer vote after the final challenge. Sensing their apprehension, Darby's grandmother offers words of reassurance. She asks for a private moment with Darby. Walking the streets of Chicago, she praises Darby's growing social media following, a testament to her late mother's pride. Darby, in turn, acknowledges Jake's steadfast support, drawing strength from her grandmother's sage advice to hold on to each other, confident that they could overcome any obstacle. With gratitude in her heart, Darby embraces her grandmother, ready to face the unknown with Jake by her side. Returning to the hotel, Darby discovers a note pinned to her door, urging her to join Jake on the rooftop. Curious, she goes up to find Jake waiting for her. He gifts her with a glass of wine, suggesting they celebrate their journey in the show. As they clink glasses, they reminisce about the whirlwind of events that have unfolded. Darby, pondering the final day of the competition, expresses uncertainty about what lies ahead. But Jake reassures her they'll tackle it together. Darby admits that amidst the excitement, she struggled to discern reality from the show. However, Jake's heartfelt confession reassures her that his feelings for her are genuine, unaffected by the chaos of the competition. Encouraged by his honesty, Darby reciprocates, acknowledging the depth of her own emotions. Just as they lean in for a kiss, their intimate moment is shattered by the unexpected arrival of Jake's parents. Apologetic for the intrusion, they explain Jake's promise of a steak dinner at a restaurant his mother had discovered online. Darby insists that Jake go with them, so he bids her a reluctant farewell and departs with his parents. The final day of the competition arrives. The couples and their families gather in anticipation of the final show. Amidst the excitement, Darby's grandmother lightheartedly remarks on the abundance of kissing among the couples in the show, causing laughter among the group. Jake's mother offers him some unconventional advice, urging him to shed tears if the opportunity arises. Meanwhile, Marcy can't resist overhearing the conversation her curiosity piqued by the interaction between Jake and his mother. Jake, reflecting on his journey, expresses gratitude for the incredible experience, which his mother urges him to say, because it resonates with the audience. As the final show commences, couples and families take to the stage. With a reassuring word to Darby, Jake stands by her side as they await their turn. The hosts, introducing the couple's families, invite any last-minute statements from the couples before the final challenge. In a swift move, Marcy parrots Jake's mother's advice, 
setting the stage for the ultimate test, the Declare Yourself Challenge. Fate determines Jake will speak first, pouring out his heart to Darby, pledging unwavering devotion and hope for their future together. Overwhelmed, Darby passes out, prompting a frantic response from Jake as they carry her away to a private room. Surrounded by her loved ones, Darby regains consciousness, learning of the events that transpired. Jake's mother happily reveals Marcy botched her speech and asks to show Darby, but she's too weak for that. Darby and Jake request privacy to discuss their next steps. Alone together, Darby expresses concern that Jake's flawless declaration might make them win the show, jeopardizing her plans in New York. Their conversation is interrupted by Sarah, announcing the need for a family filming session while they await the final vote. As the anticipation reaches its peak, the two couples are summoned to the stage, awaiting the moment when the winner will be revealed. With bated breath, they hold on to every second of suspense until finally, Jake and Darby are declared the victors of the wedding of a lifetime. Marcy's departure, accompanied by Larry, is marked by simmering anger, while Jake and Darby engage in a joyous embrace, unable to contain their excitement. Joined by their elated families, they rejoice in the glow of their triumph. Molly, the host, drops a bombshell, their dream wedding will be held in their hometown, a first in the show's history. The news causes excitement through the entire family, setting the stage for a celebration unlike any other. In the aftermath of the show, Molly takes Darby to a bridal store, where the daunting task of choosing a wedding gown awaits. To Darby's delight, a celebrity stylist named Sebastian, whom she admires, awaits her arrival, adding a touch of glamour to the proceedings. Meanwhile, Jake finds himself in another dressing room, navigating the myriad options for his wedding attire. Their wedding preparations continue as they indulge in cake tasting. After their dress fitting, they venture to another venue where Sebastian unveils the audience's chosen suit for Jake. Although Jake had hoped for the powder blue one, he embraces the decision with optimism. Eager to see Darby's gown, they are met with a surprising revelation from Sebastian, saying America and Jake will see her wedding dress at the same time. Molly adds that the groom shouldn't see the dress before the big day, as it's bad luck. With preparations for the day concluded, Sarah leads them on a stroll, revealing they won't be staying together that night, to heighten the anticipation for their wedding day. Grateful for her guidance, they exchange laughs and heartfelt thanks before parting ways. As they walk home, they are approached by a grateful business owner, who credits them with saving her business and reveals she secured a ticket to their wedding, much to the dismay of the couple. Finally, the long-awaited wedding day arrives, heralding a flurry of excitement and activity. As the hosts kick off the wedding show, Darby busies herself at home, slipping into what she hopes will be the perfect wedding dress. However, her joy turns to confusion as she emerges in an unexpected gown, met with surprised looks from everyone present. Doubt stares at her as she questions Sebastian about the sudden change, only to learn of a last-minute switch mandated by the sponsors. Despite her reservations, Sebastian's reassurance and the compliments from her loved ones offer a beam of solace. With preparations underway, Darby's grandmother attempts to bestow upon her a lucky charm with a pair of earrings her mother wore on her wedding day, but she notices that she can't find it. They all leave to go get it. Meanwhile, Jake gets to the wedding venue, greeted by the presence of unfamiliar bridesmaids, and groomsmen recruited as extras by the production crew. Despite his unease, he maintains his composure. Amidst the confusion, Peggy offers Darby some words of wisdom. Moments before her grandmother and Sebastian rush in bearing heartfelt gifts, earrings passed down from her late mother, a token of familial love and support. As Sebastian hands her the bouquet, Darby is informed of the show's decision to expand their bridal party, prompting her to flee in distress. Her family follows her immediately. Amidst the chaos, Jake explores the wedding venue, only to find himself disheartened by the setup. As he rushes outside, he collides with Darby, and they embrace and kiss each other. In a moment of clarity, they decide to leave the path set by the show officials. This leads to them revealing their plan to announce their breakup to their families before the surprise show. Jake confesses their enduring love, tested by the trials of recent years. Despite the host's plea to proceed, Darby asserts that the setting of the wedding doesn't resonate with their story. Disappointed, the host walks away while his wife offers a comforting perspective, acknowledging the couple's bravery, revealing they gave them the most exciting ending ever. The couple go to the hills with their families, where they have an intimate outdoor ceremony. Darby changes her dress to one more suited for their newfound freedom. During their exchange of vows, Jake surprises Darby with tickets to New York, urging her to pursue her dreams. Overwhelmed with joy, Darby reciprocates, revealing her plans to support Jake's aspirations for a ski school. Their vows culminate in a passionate kiss, witnessed by their cheering families, as they embark on a new chapter together, guided by love and mutual support. 